Good evening, boys and girls. Welcome to lesson 2.2, divide by a one-digit divisor. Our essential question is how do you solve and check division problems? So today's lesson is going to be a lot like we've done in the last couple days, but today we're going to talk about how you can check your work. Let's get started by turning in our Go Math books to lesson 2.2. So our first step is to figure out where we're going to place our first digit in our quotient. So if I look at 312 divided by 5, I know that 312 is close to 300, and I can divide 300 by 5, and I know 300 divided by 5 is 60, because 60 times 5 is 300. Therefore, I know my answer needs to be a little bit above 60. That's how we can estimate. So the first digit is going to be in my tens place. It's going to go right above my tens place because I'm estimating the quotient to be about 60. And of course, that's a number in the tens place. So step two will be divide the tens. The reason why we're dividing the tens is because it's 312 and I have 31 tens. So we're going to divide these 31 tens right there and then we're going to do 31 divided by 5. Well, I know 30 divided by 5 is 6, so 31 divided by 5 is 6. That's step one. Remember, step two is to multiply. So I'm going to multiply 6 times 5, which is going to be 30. And now I've used 30 of my tens out of 31 tens. Let's subtract to see how many tens I have left. I have one ten left. So now I need to regroup and make them into ones. So I'm going to drop down my two ones right next to my one ten. Remember, this has a value of ten ones. And I have two ones. 10 plus 2 is 12 ones. So now step 3 is going to be divide the ones. So I have 12 ones divided by 5. I know if I had 12 ones and I have 5 groups, I can put 2 in each of those groups. That's my division step. Now let's multiply 2 times 5. 2 times 5 is 10. We're going to subtract to see how many ones are left over. I'll have two ones left over. Now there's nothing else left to bring down because I've used up my ones already. Therefore, my remainder is two, and two is less than five, so I am correct. But let's go ahead now and do what our essential question is about. Our essential question is about how we can check our work. The way that we check our work is multiplication, because remember, the opposite of division is multiplication. So I can take 62 times 5, and then I'll add my remainder, and that should equal 312. Let's check it together. 62 times 5. Let's work it out. 5 times 2 ones is 10 ones. 5 times 6 tens is going to be 30 tens, plus one more will be 31 tens. Therefore, we have 310. But remember, I have 312 here. That's because I have a remainder of 2 to add to my 310. So 310 plus my remainder of 2 will give me what I started out with as my dividend, 312. All right, let's go on to our next question. All right, so let's skip number three and let's move on to number four. 336 divided by seven. Now my step one says use an estimate to place the first digit in the quotient. So I'm gonna round this up to 350. And the reason why I'm going to estimate this as 350, because I know seven times 50 is 350. So I'm going to say my answer needs to be 350 divided by 7 is about 50. And I'm going to say that my answer has to be less than 50 because 336 is less than 50. So if my final answer is below 50, that's a reasonable answer. So let's go ahead and see where our first answer needs to be placed. The first digit must be placed in the tens place because my estimate goes to the tens place. So let's go ahead and start out by setting up our equation like I like to do it. 336 divided by 7. So let's go ahead and start by looking at our tens, because remember, our answer is going to be in our tens place right up here. So we have 33 tens. If I have 33 long pieces and I want to put them into seven different groups, I know that I can have four in each group because 
4 times 7 is 28. So I will be using up 28 of those long strip pieces or my tens pieces. I couldn't put 5 up here because that would be 35 I would have to use because 5 times 7 is 35. Okay, but we only have 33 to deal with. Remember, this is just our estimate. Our answer needs to be below 50. So I'm going to go ahead and put four in each group, and that means I used up 28 of my tens pieces. And now we can subtract. 33 minus 28 is going to be five left over. I have five tens left over. Now I can drop down my ones, which is a six ones. We're going to add those six ones to my five tens, which makes 56 pieces or 56 ones. So now we're going to do step three, which is divide my ones. So I have 56 ones. If I have 56 units and I want to put them in seven different piles, I know I can have eight in each pile because my multiplication fact of eight times seven is 56. It helps to know your facts. It makes it go by a lot faster. And we can subtract to see how many are left over. And we have zero left over, so there is not a remainder. Now, our essential question is check your work. Remember to check your work. You want to multiply your quotient times your divisor, and that'll give you your dividend, my 336 that we started with. So let's check it together. Find a place on your paper. There's room and do 48 times 7. All right, 7 times 8 is 56. So carry my 5 tens, drop my 6 ones, and now let's multiply my tens. I have 7 times 4 tens would be 28 tens, plus 5 more is going to give me 33 tens. So I have 336. That's exactly what we started out with, so we are correct. Let's take a look down at question five, and we're going to look at some algebra equations. We can find the value of n, which is our unknown number, in each equation. We want to write what the n represents in our related division problem. So n would equal what 3 times 45 is. So I want you to pause the video and work on what is 45 times 3, and then I want you to write down what you think the value of n is. Go ahead and press pause now. Okay, friends, you should have said 45 times 3. Now, I use the commutative property, and I just um, flipped my factors around, and instead of doing 3 times 45, I did 45 times 3. That's okay, because it's the commutative property. All right, let's go ahead and multiply. 3 times 5 ones is going to be 15 ones. 3 times 4 tens is going to be 12 tens, plus one more will be 13 tens. So I could say that n has a value of 135. Now, what does this mean? This means that if I had a division problem, n would be my dividend. It would be what I started out with. 135 divided into how many groups? Three groups would be how many in each group? Well, let's just do the fact. 3 times 45 is 135. Therefore, 135 divided by 3 is 45. Okay, let's look at this question. The answer is 643 equals 4 times 160 plus n. We want to find out what this unknown value is, and then we're going to figure out what this would mean if this was a division problem. All right, so I want you to pause the video after you solve 4 times 160. You're going to get a total, and then I want you to figure out what you think the value of n is. Go ahead and press pause. Okay, everybody. For this one, you should have said 160 times 4, or 4 times 160. It's the same equation. We're going to work it out. I have 0 ones. Six times 4 times 6 tens is going to be 24 tens. And then 4 times 100 would be 400, plus 2 more hundreds is going to be 600. So I have 640 is going to be my total so far. I'm going to write that right there. 640 is what 4 times 160 is, plus n. Now we know our total is going to equal 643. So for the value of n, you should have said n has a value of 3. Now let's talk about how this is related to a division problem. In the division problem, I would have had 643 be my dividend, 
which is my number that I'm dividing up, into four groups would be my divisor. And there's my divisor right there. Here's my dividend. And we would end up with 160 in each group because we just worked that out with multiplication. Out of 160 in each group. Now what would the N be? The N would be the remainder. And we found the remainder to be 3. So that's what that N's value would be, would be the remainder. And remember, you can check it with multiplication. 160 times 4 is 640, plus my remainder of 3 is 643. So it works out. Okay, let's skip on down to our problem-solving questions. Number 8 says, Randy has 128 ounces of dog food. He feeds his dog 8 ounces of food each day. How many days will the dog food last? We're looking for how many days will the dog food last. We know that he has a total of 128 ounces of dog food, and he feeds his dog 8 ounces each day. So, go ahead and set up your division problem to figure out how many days the dog food will last. Go ahead and try to solve this one on your own and we'll check it together. Press pause now. Okay, you should have had 128 divided by 8. You should have said that you have to start your answer right in your tens place because if you have one group of 100, you cannot put in 8 groups 100 in each group. So therefore, we're going to look at our 12 tens. So our answer, our quotient, will start in our tens place. So if I had 12 tens and I have eight groups, each group is only going to get one. So I have one times eight would be eight tens. And let's subtract to see how many tens are left. We have four tens left because 12 minus eight is four. Now let's see how many ones we have total. I'm going to bring down that eight ones right there. And now I have 48 ones. Let's go ahead and divide up our ones. I have 48 ones divided into eight groups. I know each group is going to have six because six times eight is 48. There is not any left over. So the question says, how many days will the dog food last? It should last 16 days. Let's check with um, multiplication to see does this answer make sense? Is it reasonable? All right, if there are 16 days and eight ounces are given to the dog each day, do our multiplication, there's gonna be 128 ounces total that was used. Therefore, 16 days makes total sense for eight ounces each day for a total of 128 ounces to start with. All right, and question number nine says, Angelina bought a 64-ounce can of lemonade mix. She uses four ounces of mix for each pitcher of lemonade. How many pitchers of lemonade can she make from this can of mix? Now let's stop and think. She has a 64-ounce can of lemonade mix. She only uses four ounces each for each pitcher of lemonade. So how many total pitchers can she make? Go ahead and set up your division problem. And I want you to work this one out and find out how many different pitchers of lemonade she can make from this mix. Go ahead and press pause. Okay, friends, you should have said if there were 64 ounces of lemonade mix and she uses four ounces for each pitcher, you can say that I can have six tens and I have four groups. Okay, and so I'm going to go ahead and divide. I have enough tens to divide in my four groups. Each group will have one ten. Now let's multiply. 1 times 4 is 4 tens that we used, and there are 2 tens left over. Let's go ahead and bring down our 4 ones to add to our 2 tens. So now I have 24 ones left to divide. So we're going to now divide 24 ones into 4 groups. If I have 24 ones into 4 groups, I know each group can have 6 because six times four is 24. When I subtract, there's none left over. Therefore, we can say that they can make 16 pitchers of lemonade. Let's check with multiplication just to be sure. 16 pitchers of lemonade times four ounces for each pitcher would give me a total of 64 ounces um, of a can of lemonade mix. So, so our answer is correct. They use 16 pitchers of lemonade. 
All right, go ahead and turn your Go Math book page over, and I want you to answer question one and two on your own. I want you to read them carefully, work out the problems in your space provided inside of your book. Make sure that you're showing your work because I will be looking for that when I come around and check tomorrow. Also, right up at the top of your um, Go Math book page, I want you to rate yourself how you feel about division with a one-digit divisor as well as checking with multiplication. I want you to rate yourself right up top here in your Go Math book because I will be glancing at that as well. And and do questions three through six on your own as well. We will be checking those together. Remember, rate yourself either one, a novice, two, apprentice, three, a practitioner, or four, expert. Okay, here are the first two questions you need to work on. And go ahead and do those in your GoMath book. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great night.